Greetings and welcome to Lizard Creations. Today I'm going to show you how I polish this tiger eye. It's not a perfectly cut tiger eye. It doesn't have, this, have the chatoyancy that I would like, but at least you'll get to see the process on how it's actually polished. So let's get started. Just to clarify, this video covers the polishing of the stone. It doesn't cover the slabbing, the trimming, the rough shaping, or the dopping. That I will cover in other videos. The first step is to apply a girdle line around the back edge of the stone. It can be one quarter to one third the depth of the stone. It's used as a reference line for grinding. It can be applied before or after the dopping. Dopping is when the stick is attached to the stone using dopping wax. I made this little jig to accurately put a girdle line around the edge of the stone. The purpose of the girdle line is to give a thicker boundary around the edge of the stone. A sharp narrow edge increases the chance of chipping and it makes it more difficult to fit into a finding. Now that the girdle line is complete, we can move on to the polishing. On this side of the polisher, I have all of my shaping wheels that range from 60 to 280 grit. On this side of the polisher, I have my pre-polish and polishing wheels. The 600 and 1200 are considered pre-polishing grits, and the 3000, 14000, and cerium are considered polishing wheels. Tiger Eye is about a 7 on the Moz hardness scale. Although I could shape the stone faster on the 60 grit wheels, I'm going to start on the 80 grit wheel. The 60 grit wheels are great for removing a lot of material quickly, but they leave deep scratches. All of my wheels, other than the cerium wheel, are diamond wheels. Whenever you use diamond wheels, you, you need to use water. The water cleans the grit from the wheel and the stone, and it also provides cooling. You do not need a lot of water, just a few drops. You can feel a mist coming off the wheel. I will start by shaping a 45 degree bevel around the stone until I reach the girdle line. When I am grinding, I do not need to apply a lot of pressure to the stone. Whenever you are polishing, you should try to use the full width of the wheel so you get an even wear across the face of the wheel. There are basically two styles of lapidary diamond wheels, solid wheels and soft wheels. Solid wheels can be either plated the coating of diamond is applied to a solid wheel with a bonding compound or sintered. Diamonds are impregnated into a thicker solid carrier. Sintered wheels last much longer than coated wheels. Solid wheels are good for initial shaping but leave a flat surface. Soft wheels have the diamond grit adhered to a rubber backing so they are good for shaping the curved surfaces of the stone because they can contour to the curved shape. Normally, before wheels are used for the first time, they need to be dressed. To dress them, you apply water and use a hard stone or a brick for a few minutes across the full face of the wheel. By dressing them, you remove any high points, which could be sharp, and put scratches in the stone you are polishing. On coarser wheels, the high points may cut your fingers if you were to rub up against the wheel. The wheel that I am currently using is an 80 grit centered diamond wheel. All of my solid wheels are in the 60 to 220 grit range. They last longer than rubber backed wheels and since the bulk of the material is removed during the initial shaping, I selected wheels that are more durable. My 80 grit and above wheels have seen a lot of use so they are well broken in and have no sharp edges. They are still abrasive though so I wouldn't want to rub up against them for any length of time.
Throughout the process, I frequently check for consistent angles, girdle depth, distances from the edge, and general shape. I'm just checking the 45 degree bevel angle to see how close it is to the girdle line. I'm just looking for areas that need more grinding to create an even girdle depth. Here you can see the 45 degree bevel angle between the face of the stone and the girdle line. Now that I have completed the 45 degree bevel, I will start on a 60 degree bevel. I'm using the white areas that I can see along the side and top of the stone to judge the angle of the bevel. When I am rocking the stone, I am looking for a consistent shape. The 60 degree angle is the angle from the side of the stone. It is a 30 degree angle between the flat top of the stone and the wheel. At this point, I could start applying a curve to the top of the stone. In order to do that, I would start rocking the stone across the face of the wheel. I would create a curved surface in all directions. I tried to maintain the height of the stone while shaping the curved top. The flat top should have a uniform oval shape with a consistent distance from the outer edge of the stone. Now that I have finished the rough shaping, I need to clean the stone to remove any grit or diamond that may be contaminating the surface of the stone. To clean the stone, I use clean water in a separate container for each grit. By using a specific container for each grit, I do not have to worry about cross-contamination between wheels. I will work on the 220 wheel next. The first step is to start the water. I make sure the full surface of the wheel is wet before applying the stone. I change the pattern that I use to a rocking motion. This will create a curved surface by blending the 45 and 60 degree angles together. I rotate the stone as I rock it so the complete circumference is blended into a consistent curve. I'm looking for a uniform shape in both directions. Here I am using the 4 foot fluorescent lighting above me to see how consistent my shape is. A good shape will maintain a straight line across the stone and the light will transition smoothly as I tilt the stone. This is acceptable for this grip, so now I can clean the stone in clean water in the 220 grit container. I now move on to the 280 grit wheel. 
The first two wheels were solid wheels. From this point on, all of the wheels will be soft, which will aid in creating smooth surfaces. From this point on, I will either use a rocking motion or a rocking motion in conjunction with a rotation motion. I also smooth the side of the stone. Here I am using the fluorescent lights above me to see how consistent my shaping is. This is the final shaping wheel. Finer grit wheels remove less material, so they are not efficient at shaping. Here I am using a rotational motion to smooth out the crown of the capuchon. The shaping is now complete and we can move on to the 600 grit wheel, which is considered a pre-polished grit. But before we start on the 600 wheel, we need to wash the stone to prevent contaminating the 600 wheel with 280 grit particles. From this point on, I follow the same process as I have done for the previous wheels. I apply water to the wheels, grind them using the same patterns, check the shape by using the fluorescent lights above me, and wash them in separate containers between each wheel. Since this is very repetitive, I will cut out most of the grinding from this point on and show points of interest and the results of each wheel. There's a little jump in the light in the middle of the stone. That tells me it is flatter there and I don't have a perfectly consistent curve. The 600 wheel is now finished and we can move on to the 1200 wheel. A general rule of thumb when using abrasives is to cut the grit size in half for the next stage. In other words, you would go 150, 300, 600, 1200, 2400, etc. for each finer grit. The goal is to remove the previous grit scratches and only leave the current grit scratches. Having every grit combination isn't always possible, so you try to get close to this general rule of thumb. At a certain point, the scale of economics kicks in. Humans find it difficult to see finer scratches without the aid of magnification, so the jumps between grit sizes can become larger.
This completes the pre-polishing stages. Time to wash the stone and move on to the 3000 grit wheel. Here's the dry stone. You have to dry the stone at each stage to see the scratches. A wet stone is the look you want once you have completed the stone. The 3000 is finished, time to move on to the 14000 wheel. A wet stone doesn't show you the correct shine of a stone. It always looks better. This is what it looks like dry. The last wheel is cerium, which is a fine polish. This is the polish off of the cerium wheel after it has been dried. The last polishing step is to buff the stone. I wet the stone and then sprinkle it with 0.25 micron aluminum oxide. I prep the buffing wheel by wetting it. If the wheel gets too dry, it has a tendency to grab the stone and pull it out of your hands. You should never mix buffing compounds, so you need a separate buffing wheel for each buffing compound and grit that you use. You apply light pressure when buffing. I can tell by the pull on the stone when the buff is getting too dry, so I will apply water to the wheel multiple times during the buffing process. I have edited out the sound of my buffing wheel because I make my own buffs using chamois which are not perfectly balanced so they cause a bit of vibration and make too much noise for the videos. It is best to apply whatever you are buffing to the part of the buff that would propel the item in the safest direction in the event the item became airborne. Having a stone come off a dop stick is not uncommon. Once you have finished buffing you need to clean the buffing compound off of the stone. If there is a fault in the stone, the buffing compound will impregnate itself in any tiny fault. A toothbrush and water is handy for cleaning when that is the case. The last step of the process is to remove the stone from the dop stick. The easiest way I know to do that is to take the dop stick, put it in a plastic bag, and I say put it in a plastic bag because I'm going to put it in the freezer. If it falls off the dop stick when it's in the freezer, chances are you'll have a hard time finding your stone later. Put it in there, come back in half an hour, and it should be off. Well, it's been a little more than half an hour, and it's time to check to see if the stone has come off the dop stick. So it's been in the freezer now for a while, and yes, it has come off. It is off the dop stick. There's the stone, and there's the dop stick right there. The stone is finished and I am moving it so you can see its chatoyancy. It is now time to showcase two of my wife's creations. The first one is Mirage. It's a mixed media. It's made from wood, stone and resin. It's on a 10 inch by 14 inch wood base and it has a natural color wood frame. The second one is Beachcombers Delight. It's a mixed media. It's made from paint, resin, stone, shells, and starfish. It's on a 16 by 20 inch canvas, and it has a wood frame that has a natural color. And remember, have fun, be safe, and create a remarkable treasure.